matter and energy through an ecosystem and that matter and energy gets transferred through the different trophic levels okay um, but okay, matter and energy will go through an ecosystem differently okay so matter which is the actual like physical atoms that that you are made of so when you're when you eat your food okay the actual physical atoms that that food is made of um, that matter gets cycled through an ecosystem it gets reused Okay, matter is neither created nor destroyed, so it gets reused. Energy, on the other hand, um, only goes one way through an ecosystem. All right, so here's how that happens. So you have the sun okay, giving energy to all of your primary producers, okay, and so the primary producers have matter and energy. They get eaten okay, by consumers over here, okay, and those consumers pass it up the food chain. So you have primary, secondary, tertiary consumers pass it up the food chain. Okay, and so the matter and energy goes through um, those levels of the food chain. When the primary producers or the consumers die, decomposers break them down. Okay, and so the decomposers will get like the last vestiges of energy out of whatever has died, and then the matter gets put back into the nutrient pool, and then those can be reused by the primary producers. Okay, so energy only goes one way through the ecosystem, whereas matter gets recycled. Does that make sense? Energy only goes one way, okay, and the matter gets recycled. That's why we need a perpetual input of energy into our ecosystem. Okay? And the reason why um, energy only goes one way is because at each level in the food chain, each trophic level, you lose energy. Okay? So only about 10% of the energy from one trophic level to the next is passed on. And there's three major reasons why only 10% gets passed on. Um, number one is inedible materials. So when you eat a clam, okay, you eat like the soft body of the clam, right? But you still have the shell of the clam. Okay? The clam put a lot of energy from the food that it ate into making that shell. However, you can't eat the shell and like digest the shell and get the energy from that shell. Right? So when you eat that clam, that energy that's stored in that in that shell is lost to you right so inedible materials like bones and shells and stuff the energy that's in there you can't get so that gets lost also um, when that clam ate its food it took some of the energy that it got from that food and put it into its own cellular functioning and growth okay so it burned that energy um, and used it and so now it's gone so now when you eat that clam, you can't get that energy, all right? Because they already used it, it's gone. Also, reproductive losses. So when that clam reproduces, it will release either eggs or sperm into the water, and it takes energy to make those eggs or sperm, okay? And so the energy that it used to make those is now lost to you as well. Does that make sense? So only 10% of the energy from one level to the next can be passed on because of these reasons. So Energy gets lost at each step in the food chain, so you need a perpetual input of energy into the ecosystem to keep it going. Yay, sun. Yeah? Okay. So here's a picture that you actually have in your notes to help you see this. So if you have 100% of energy available in your primary producers, um, when the herbivores eat that, only 10% of that gets passed on. 90% is lost because of inedible materials, cellular functioning, and reproduction. When a carnivore eats the herbivore, only 1% gets passed on of the original energy, okay? And then if another carnivore eats that carnivore, only 0.1% gets passed on, right? So eventually, um, this is why we don't have like infinite number, like amounts of uh, animals in a food chain. Food chains only really have five to six levels at the most because you lose energy at each step. And so if you have like one top carnivore, it's gonna take like one top carnivore takes 10 uh, lower level carnivores to support it. And then those 10 lower level carnivores are gonna need 100 um, herbivores to support it. And those 100 herbivores are gonna need 1,000 primary producers to support it. Does that make sense? So there's only so many primary producers, so you can only have so many.